Ears. Check. Patient pants. Patient squirt, but close enough. <laughs> Positive can-do attitude. Check. Checklist. Check. Looks like it's time for a great day at Disneyland. Hey, ma'am fam, we are at Disneyland in California, and we've got a checklist of things to do, but neither of us have seen the full thing. That's right. We created secret checklists for one another's with topics and categories of things to do. Neither of us have seen each other's yet, but we're going to try to slot in our favorites to have the greatest day at Disneyland. And before we go, we got to acknowledge what's happening here. I'm not sick, but apparently sometimes when you talk for a living, your voice takes PTO and your mind and your body don't. <laughs> so I kind of got this like raspy uh, thing going on a la Phoebe Buffet, yeah. but just we're going to all roll with it and it'll be great. Let's go. It's Point Disneyland. How can it not be great? Yeah. There really is no better feeling than walking into Disneyland. I just, I'll never get tired of it. Sigh. That's how I feel when I walk did into you, Disneyland. Did you just say the word sigh? Sigh. I really wanted to emphasize the <laughs> sigh because that's how I feel. Just happy, nostalgic sigh. I dig it. That's nice. Now, I am purchasing Genie Plus today, even though we don't know what we're doing. But I have a feeling it will be helpful. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a wise decision. It's a lot easier to use here than it is in Walt Disney World. It's a lot more kind of go with the flow. And so I think it'll work out. We did do a video on the differences yeah. between Genie Plus. Oh, Chip. He's playing rock, paper, scissors. He's playing rock, paper, scissors. He was playing rock, paper, scissors. Oh he just won with rock. Well, he would probably beat me. So we're purchasing Genie Plus. Genie Plus is a lot easier to use here. It's a lot more go with the flow. Um, we did a whole video on the difference between Genie Plus and Disney World and Disneyland, if you want to check that out. But I, I have a feeling it will be helpful for today. Alan. Yeah. Are you ready for your first category? Let's go. Category is opening day attraction. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> uh, don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, well, I know the railroad. Obviously. We've got the carousel. Does Alice, does Alice count? No, Alice does not opening day. But the Mad Tea Party, though. Yes. Okay, Mad Tea Party does. Storybook canal boats. Yeah, let's honor Max, though. He can't be here. That's He's true. at work. Uh, let's take a ride and visit hell with Mr. Toad. For Max. For Max, of course. <laughs> Even when bros can't ride together, we go on the bros ride. I hope that riding with me will be an adequate replacement. <laughs> I think it'll be okay. Nothing like walking slightly to the right down Main Street. The middle of Main Street, Street USA? <laughs> well, we're not in the middle. We're, we're walking right down the slightly to the right of Main Street USA. Honestly, beautiful. The, Chef's kiss. The singing is better, I'd say, <laughs> with my voice like this. <laughs> but yes, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, opening day attraction here and Disney World, but it's unfortunately gone in the Magic Kingdom. Also could have done the Jungle Cruise, mm -hmm. uh, obviously the train which you mentioned, the right. storybook, canal boats, Autopia, Snow White, but I think you made a good choice. Yeah. Snow White would have been my choice, but. Well, keep that in mind. Um, yeah, there are tons of opening day attractions here that are still in operation. Some of them might have gotten a facelift. Like Snow White. Mm -hmm. but. I think that's just one of the really cool parts of visiting Disneyland is you get to step into those pieces of history that are still operating. Peter Pan's flight. Oh yeah. Disneyland opened up on July 17th, 1955, 68 years, almost to the day from when you're seeing this video. Mm. And that's part of the reason I like Disneyland so much is it feels nostalgic. It feels like you're in back in time. Not to mention it's where Walt actually got to walk around, which is just, I think for me and the history nerd and the Disney nerd that I know I am and you are, it's just, it, there's something different about knowing this is where Walt actually got to, like, have a literal hand in things. While it might not look like it on the outside because it is undergoing a little bit of refurbishment, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride is, in fact, here and tells the wonderful tale of Mr. Toad as he travels merrily on his way to nowhere in particular, uh, but that winds up being Hell. It's one of the opening day dark ride attractions here in Fantasyland, and it is still a fan favorite if Mr. Duckfist or Max would have you believe it. He is their biggest fan. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, as well as Alice in Wonderland, are going to be closed later this summer for a long refurbishment. At one point, Peter Pan's Flight was on that list as well, but it's no longer on Disneyland's list, so make sure you check back. Right now, they're using Scrim, which is a fancy sheet printed with a giant picture of Toad Hall. And the theory is that if you took a picture of Fantasyland, 
you wouldn't be able to tell this isn't a real building. What an interesting theory that is. I guess it's better than a big orange construction wall. Oh, I agree with that for sure. Anyway, let's get drunk and go to hell. Sounds like a plan. And inside, and do oh, no. to ride with me. Yeah. What a good ride. It is such a good what ride. a good ride that is. I love that ride. It's I do, so silly. It is very silly. I do miss it in Orlando. As Max would say, the real estate mogul, Winnie the Pooh, the magnate. I think he'd call him Winnie the Pooh Pooh. We're the real estate mogul, Winnie the Pooh Pooh, <laughs> took over the single best attraction to ever find itself to Walt Disney World. People would say that the Disneyland version of an attraction is better. Pirates of the Caribbean, Haunted Mansion. But in this case, the Walt Disney World one was better. But did we get to keep the better version of this attraction? No, because Winnie the Pooh needed a place to go. Now Disneyland got a Winnie the Pooh attraction without getting rid of Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. That he would. Oh, okay. We're acting like Max is no longer with us when he's literally just mid move right now, so he's just not here in this park. <laughs> he's he's. It honestly feels alive. a little bit like sacrilege <laughs> riding Mr. Toad without him it present. Did. But you should ride it when you come to Disneyland yeah. in honor of Max and just because it's awesome. And because it's amazing. All right, now it's time for your pick. Yes. Okay, are you ready? Is it go get coffee? Because that's what I would like to do next. We can certainly work that in. Okay. I'm actually kicking myself for forgetting that as well, but. An unofficial entry on the checklist, get <laughs> right, coffees. Right. Got it, okay. The reason I was laughing so hard before is because I also picked an opening day attraction on your list, so. Sure. I, that tracks. Uh, I guess there's no reason for me to list them all out again, because I already did that, <laughs> and I already said if I was gonna pick one, it would be Snow White's Enchanted Wish. Right it over counts. there. It counts, right? It's not exactly the same as it was opening day, but. It counts. Um, yeah, I'd say it counts. Okay, good. Uh, we're gonna ride Snow White's Chain of Wish, but after I mobile order cold brews from Red Rose Tap. Agreed. Cold brews acquired. Good. Clink. Oh. It's a little sweeter than I normally like coffee, but desperate times, desperate measures. This is Red Rose Tavern. It is a Beauty and the Beast themed quick service restaurant where you can get the gray stuff. I hear it's delicious. It is. Yeah, we ate it that one time. It was very good. Uh, you can get sandwiches and chicken tenders, but they also always have some kind of cold brew on tap. This one is the Tavern Cold Brew. It's got sweet cream and uh, flavored coffee. The coffee itself has vanilla and caramel in it, so I like that Disneyland offers lots of seasonal cold brews. And now we have asked to Snow White. Snow White's Enchanted Wish, obviously an opening day ride or I wouldn't be riding it right now. However, it opened as Snow White's Adventures, and then it became Snow White's Scary Adventures because so many children were terrified of the witch. I have to admit, I am also terrified of the witch. That follows a pattern, Ursula. You know, she didn't really scare me in the movie, but on the ride, she's very spooky. This was also an opening day attraction in Walt Disney World. It's no longer there. And what's unique about this ride is that when it reopened after the COVID closure. That's when it became Snow White's Enchanted Wish. They didn't change the ride track or much about the attraction, but they just added some enhancements, some touches of technology throughout it, some lighting effects, uh, some updated animatronics. And honestly, I think this is a perfect attraction. It doesn't feel old, it feels new and refreshed, but it holds on to that original nostalgia. It's iconic, it's the first animated feature film. How can you not love this one? I agree, how can you not love it? We do it every time. Which dwarf's cart are we going to ride in? Doc. Bashful. <laughs> I think we do that every time, too. We say our favorite dwarves every time, and <laughs> we have yet to get either one. Either one. So let's hope this is the time. <laughs> Magic Mirror on the wall. This is 
Well, that was lovely. Yeah. The Queen's terrifying. I told you. Yeah. Now, most of the attractions in Fantasyland don't take Genie Plus Lightning Lane. There's not enough space. So a good tip is to rope drop these attractions as some of them get really long lines like Peter Pan's Flight and even Alice in Wonderland. But most of the time, you can find them 20 minutes or less and they're nice filler attractions if you don't want to rope drop them. Oh, okay, well. You're up. I'm next? Yeah. All right. Okay, this next one is very important time-wise. Okay. Do right now. Okay. <laughs> Eat somewhere waterside. So all I'm saying is you still obviously pick whatever you want, but don't let the lack of reservations stifle you because there's a chance that you have one. Okay. Uh, well, that opens things up. So you have all of Pixar Pier, some of Paradise Gardens. Um, you can always go to the wharf. Which will at some point be, it's like mid construction to San Francisco's. <laughs> War Francisco. <laughs> I can't say it regardless. <laughs> uh, Blue Bayou has a res. Uh, oh no, I wanna go to, uh, I wanna go to Lamplight. I wanna go to Lamplight Lounge. I thought you might, because yeah. you've previously stated that's your favorite restaurant it's in so Disneyland. Good. Yeah. So I did make that reservation. I also was hoping I could slot it into one of mine if needed. So we do have a reservation in a couple of hours, so we're gonna put a pin in that. Cool. And I'm gonna give you another one so we can do another one of your activities right now. Okay. The next thing on your list is ride an attraction where the vehicle was designed by the legendary Bob Gurr. Oh, he's my favorite Imagineer. Um, there's so many vehicles designed by Bob Gurr. He designed over a hundred. Yeah, so. It's so, like, <laughs> so I have plenty of options. I mean, that's like Mansion. You could do Autopia. I'm staring at the Matterhorn, like, the Matterhorn. Are you joking? No. You don't even like the Matterhorn. I know, but for Bobbert Gurr, I will ride the Matterhorn. I really thought we were going on the monorail. I am delighted to go on the Matterhorn. <laughs> I mean, listen, I, I'm in need of an adjustment, so <laughs> let's let's go. <laughs> While Molly fiddle-faddles for a lightning lane for Matterhorn that is sooner rather than later, let's chat about our friend Bob Gurr. Bob Gurr is a Disney legend in his known for creating almost anything on wheels in the Disney parks. In fact, the Carnation vehicle that used to sit outside of the Carnation ice cream parlor was made on a Model A chassis with Model T wheels, like the old Ford model vehicles, which is just bananas to me. He is also known, as it relates to this pick, for creating the Matterhorn Bobsled vehicle. It is a first of its kind steel coaster attraction, and Bob had to teach himself trigonometry to get the bobsleds to actually go up the track. So that's just bananas to think about. He also designed the monorail, oh, the Ford Magic applicable. Skyway. Oh, look, there it goes. We planned that. <laughs> Thank you, monorail. I appreciate that. As well as the Ford Magic Skyway, which is the predecessor to the People Mover. Basically, if you've been to a Disney park, you've sat in a vehicle that Bob Kerr designed. Which is, like, just think about that for a second. His body of work is all around us. It's amazing. Also, for the record, I secured the bag. And the bag, in this case, is the lighting line for the Matterhorn. <laughs> All right, let's go. The Matterhorn bobsled is a roller coaster that takes you up the Matterhorn in a bobsled, as the name would suggest, where you encounter the Yeti and then slip slide all the way back down the mountain. Is it the Yeti or is it the abominable snowman? Ah, uh, tomato potato. Regardless, it's fun, it's jerky, and I'm in dire need of a little lower back adjustment, so perfect time to go on this attraction. This one is very popular. It is a great use of a Genie Plus Lightning Lane. They also do have a single rider line, but of course that means you'll be split up from your family. It also has a 42 inch height requirement. And as a little pro tip, my favorite time to ride this is at night or at dusk, because it's really pretty. Whee!
Thank you, Bob Gurr, for this back adjustment. Yep. I needed it this time. I have some more, like, flexibility now on the low back. It was good to see our friend the Yeti. Also is under refurbishment last time we were here, so I'm glad we got to ride that. It's a great attraction. You should ride it. You absolutely should. You know, it's your turn now, though. It is my turn. All right. Well, Molly rocks it out to the Mary Poppins band that goes by. Hold on, I got a video of them. Oh, okay. So people can, can see why I'm dancing. This is a behind the scenes look. And here we have the influence of videoing something for you to view later. It's a very slow walking sort of item. But the enjoyment is nonetheless had. Okay. okay. All right, so I would like for you. Yes. To choose something to eat. Oh, good, I'm hungry. On a stick. I see the struggle happening within you. One thing? One thing. Do you see the struggle? I do. You're asking me to choose between meat sticks and cheese sticks. I sure am. I guess technically someone could choose a corn dog too, but that's someone that's not me. Two of my all-time favorite Disneyland foods are uh -huh. the meat skewers at Bengal Barbecue in Adventureland and the fried cheese on a stick at the Corn Dog Castle in California Adventure. Uh-huh. You must choose, Molly. What would you like to eat? Ultimately, my greatest love is cheese. <laughs> so we're going to California Adventure. All right, let's make that way. Made it into Disney California Adventure and more specifically into Paradise Gardens where we are headed to the Corn Dog Castle. This is a little quick service spot that serves corn dogs, as the name would suggest, hot links, and most importantly, cheese on a stick, which is, yes, quite literally a piece of cheddar cheese dunked in corn dog batter and fried. And it is a delicacy. A delicacy? <laughs> yes, that's how I would describe it. Uh huh. Mm. Nothing like hot meat and cheese in the middle of the day. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. It's literally just cheddar cheese in corn dog batter and fried. A little bit of sweetness because of the corn dog batter. Obviously, you have to love cheese to love this. I'm obsessed with it. And this is a darn good corn dog. I'm in a good place. No regrets. <laughs> Except for maybe the fact that it's now time for our lamp light reservation. <laughs> I mean, this is just an appetizer. A warm up for the tummy. 100%. Yeah. Ready to go? Yeah. I'm so excited. Lamp Light Lounge is a Pixar themed restaurant seated on the water here in Pixar Pier. It is open on weekdays for lunch and dinner and on weekends for brunch, lunch and dinner. I've actually never had lunch or dinner at Lamp Light Lounge. That's because we're brunch besties. I just made that up. Well, or I... brunchy... Br Ooh. Brunch, you know what? We'll workshop it. Brunch... Brunch tees? I was trying to do brunch buddies. Ooh. Yeah, I don't... I don't know how to make that one. You know what? We'll workshop it and we'll, and we'll bring it back around for a version 2.0. Brunchies. <laughs> <laughs> it is an incredibly popular restaurant, so reservations are highly recommended. In fact, the fact that Molly planned ahead for this one and, and made some reservations was very kind, so thank you. I'm not going to lie, though. I didn't do it until this morning. I just happened to get lucky uh, by huh. using mouse dining, which is a service that will text you reservations when available. We actually have a promo code with them right now, Mammoth5, if you want to save. Hashtag an ad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it is uh, one of my favorite spots as well, so I'm glad we get to go. I personally think one of the coolest parts about Lamplight Lounge is all the concept art and just the artwork in general that lives throughout this space. You have things from all of the Pixar movies. I mean, from Finding Nemo to Up, and then the chandelier is just sketches. Oh. I normally point out Bruce the shark from Finding Nemo because I love sharks, but today I'm going to point out baby Mike Wazowski with braces from Monsters University because he's super cute. I thought you were going to point out Buzz. I've pointed him out before too. I'm trying to mix it up, you know? Oh, uh, okay. Get some variety into the Pixar love. Yeah, I love most Pixar movies, but of course Buzz is my favorite. And as you get down here, you have some additional memorabilia. I mean, look, there's even artwork on the chairs here. Look at the here. Buzz and Woody chair. Oh my gosh. 
All right, well, I think this certainly applies as waterside dining. I just love eating here, especially sitting outside, which we requested. I love watching Incredicoaster zoom by and uh, <laughs> pal around. It's just so relaxing here. I'm bummed you didn't mention the Golden Zephyr. Aha, uh -huh, the Golden Zephyr, a real highlight for all. Truly the thing most people come here to see. Now, the drink menu itself has some interesting items. They have some lighter bites like the Brussels Caesar or the Salmon Poke for the bigger sizes you have. The salmon PLT, like the Al Pastor pork chop, or the cheddar burger if you wanted to go for a burger. They even have a vegan option here, which is the pastrami spiced impossible burger. You can also pick up some donuts as well, Molly. I know a personal favorite of yours. No donuts? Not for me. Donuts? Go nuts. Not for me. As well as an entire kids menu for what they call the budding artist, which I think is really cute. Boom. Whoa. And now the drink menu. The front is so cute. Oh, it is, yeah. Now, the drink menu itself is expansive with a variety of specialty beverages. They also have a full bar if you'd like to get something not listed here, some non-alcoholic mocktails, and a wonderful list of local draft beers, as well as some bottles and cans. One of my favorite things about Disney California Adventure is that it has become a real haven for craft beer fans. Most of the craft beer around the park, not just here, is locally or made somewhere in California. And so if you like craft beer, you might be able to find a new favorite. Our smorgasbord has arrived. Let's start with the drink, shall we? I got the final with a fix. That is Green Bar IXA Reposado Tequila with raspberry liqueur, Contro, fresh lime juice, agave nectar, with a spritz of Del Maguey, Vida Mezcal. Wow, I had a really hard time getting all that out. And I got the teaser, which is Green Bar City Bright Gin, Green Bar Hibiscus Liqueur, fresh lime juice, agave, and topped with tonic water. But I asked him for less of the agave because I don't want a sweet drink. As for the food, we decided to share lobster nachos. This is warm lobster with black beans, aged cheddar Oaxaca cheese sauce, shredded cheese blend, pico de gallo, sliced serrano chilies, and chipotle crema as well as the Kung Pao Bao. This is Kung Pao glazed crispy pork belly, soft bao bun, red peppers, toasted peanuts, and green onions. Cheers. That's nice. And you're not normally a gin drinker. I'm not a gin drinker, but sitting out here, I wanted something refreshing, wanted to try something new. I have had their take on like a breakfast old fashioned, which is very good. Um, but this is great. It's very refreshing and crisp. Can definitely taste the gin, so you have to like that kind of herbaly, florally gin flavor. Um, herbaly, florally. I you love that. You get it. I love you that. You get it. Uh, but I would definitely drink this again. Not too sweet like a lot of drinks on their menu. This. I'm so glad the Incredicoaster riders are having fun. I love the Incredicoaster. It's a great launch. To ride it. This is a delightful take on what is a, like a raspberry margarita. Very tart. Again, much like Molly, I asked for less agave syrup. So you get the tequila coming through nicely, as well as the smokiness of the mezcal on top. This is really, really quite nice. You wanna try it? Now for the food. My hand is going to be so messy. Yep. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Oh, wow. Yum. The lobster nachos are famous here at Lamplight, and I can see why. Let's start with the fact that the chips are house made. It's the same chips they use on the chilaquiles at brunch, and they're fantastic. They're sturdier than an average chip, so they hold up to all the toppings. I'm not a huge lobster fan, but I love this dish. It's not big chunks of lobster. It's almost like shredded up amongst everything else. So you get that little bit of butteriness that you want from lobster, but also it's matched perfectly with the spice from the fresh jalapenos and the pico. This is an A-plus dish, very shareable, highly recommend. Let's start talking about the bao and starting with the bun. The bun is light and fluffy, sort of stick to the roof of your mouth situation. So good. Contrast with the perfectly fried pork belly, it's crispy. The sauce on the outside is sweet, a little bit of tart. And then with the veg that you have in there of the bell peppers and cilantro. Oh, it's so perfect. It is very messy though. So just another going into it. Wow, that's good. All right, Dan's and Queen. There's not even any music this time. There isn't, it's just you. You're moving to the beat of life and your own drum. Wow, what a fun drum beat that is. Okay, Okay. we had a great meal. Yes, we did. Lamplight Lounge, very high on my list of recommendations here in Disneyland. Okay, much like you asked me for this particular selection, I'm curious. Now there is music. <laughs> it's from the Silly Symphony Swings. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, golly. I now have a question for you that might require some additional planning. Okay. I would like for you to select something from the D100 celebration. Okay, well, I'm not going to pick a D100 snack uh -huh. because, one, I'm very full right now. And, two, most of them have, like, purple frosting on them, <laughs> which is a no from me. Um, I guess I could pick something in Toontown since technically Toontown reopened kind of as part of the celebration. Could watch World of Color 1. I do love World of Color. Oh, Wondrous Journeys. Okay, so we have our evening plans. Yes. Ooh, and it's Friday, which means there should be fireworks. Because it's Anaheim and it's California, there are certain rules with when they can shoot fireworks off. And usually during the weekdays, there's not fireworks, just projections, which I would have picked anyway. Um, but tonight there's fireworks, which is excellent also because this show is going away at the end of the summer to make way for the seasonal stuff. And it's awesome. So fireworks okay. on the docket for later tonight. Got it. In the meantime, though... Can we also come see World of Color 1? In the meantime, though... Okay. Okay, with the evening plans made, how about right now, as an additional item from my list for you, you select a ride that has been worked on by one of your favorite Imagineers. Okay. That's good, because we're in Disneyland, so these are where all the OG rides are. Mm-hmm. Trying to think strategically here. So my favorite Imagineers, uh, Mark Davis is one of my favorite Imagineers. He was known for his sense of humor. Uh, and before he was an Imagineer, he was an animator that worked on a lot of lady characters like Alice and Maleficent. Uh, but he worked on my favorite attraction in Disney, so that's probably going to be the answer. Okay. Uh, we are going to ride Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay, we move back to Disneyland. Yes. Now I will say, I strongly considered picking Joe Rohde because he's the creative genius behind uh, Animal Kingdom, Pandora, and he did Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, which is my favorite ride in this park. But we're at Disneyland, so we gotta go old school. And also, we spent the entire day yesterday in Avengers Campus. That's true. Not that it isn't great. No, it was awesome. But it's just nice to see, you know, other parts of the park and resorts. <laughs> That's true. We walked six miles in Avengers Campus alone yesterday. It was. And so many back and forths. I mean, listen, we know every nook, every cranny of that section of the land now. That, that's true. Made it back into Disneyland Park and walking through Adventureland. This is not where Pirates of the Caribbean is here, though. It's in New Orleans Square, the next land. A little different for us Magic Kingdom folk. Speaking of Mark Davis, though, I could have picked Jungle Cruise. He worked on that. He worked on Haunted Mansion. He worked on basically all of your classic Disney attractions. And Mark Davis was known for his sense of humor. So he would add in little sight gags. For example, on Jungle Cruise, the folks being chased by the rhino up the totem pole. Uh, on Pirates of the Caribbean, things like the gentleman who's had too much rum and is asleep with the pigs. Or on Haunted Mansion, pretty much the entire graveyard scene was Mark Davis because he wanted to do something fun and silly to combat the spooky, scary first half of the mansion done by Imagineer Claude Coates. And what's extra fun about riding pirates is that I also get to talk about Harriet Burns, who was one of the original three Imagineers, the first female Imagineer. She was known for her detail work, things like hand sewing each feather on every enchanted tiki room bird, or in the case of Pirates of the Caribbean, hand sewing real human hair to the leg of that one pirate. Talk about commit to a bit. We love that. Now Pirates of the Caribbean does not have Genie Plus here. However, it usually doesn't have too long of a line. Like right now it's 15 minutes long. And because it's in New Orleans Square, you'll see the exterior has a much different vibe than the fortress over at Magic Kingdom. It's much more like an old Southern home with the different wrought iron work but I just love it. This is also the far superior version of Pirates of the Caribbean. Inarguably. It's much longer, there's more theming, and it is just simply my favorite Disney ride ever. It's also the last ride that Walt Disney himself worked on, so lots of history in this one. Alan, not counting anyone added based on the films, who's your favorite pirate? 
Um, I think it's here, kitty kitty. How about a little bit of old time rum? Oh, the drunk guy is talking to the cats. I yeah. like him. And the cats who are really not into it. That or, I mean, Captain Hook and Smee. Oh, sure. Are great. That's a funny story. I like either Pirate Red. Oh, we love Red. Who's become a kick butt lady captain pirate. Or, as far as originals go, I've always been partial, not to a pirate, but to the dog with the keys in his mouth. I love that scene. It's my favorite scene. He doesn't deserve to be called Mongrel. No. He's just he'd be a good boy. The goodest boy. Avasted <laughs> through pirates. Yes. Alan's turn again. We'll see what's gonna be. Are you ready? Yeah, I hope so. Okay. Your challenge, should you choose to accept it, and you have to. I feel like you're best. I don't think there's a choice. That's the point of the video, is to ride an attraction featured in a live action movie. Cool. Just after we got up pirates. Yeah. Yeah. Neat. Okay. Well, there are a lot, thankfully. Okay, well, we could do Star Wars. They have Smuggler's Run and Rise of the Resistance, but that exists as a copy that's exactly the same on the East Coast. So, don't see a real reason to do that here. Uh, we could do Guardians of the Galaxy, Mission Breakout. Don't know if I want to go back to Avengers Campus already. Um, there's so many options. We could do Jungle Cruise. What, what am I talking about? Indiana Jones Adventure. Obviously, that's the obvious decision. So, also the movie came out like today as a film. Yeah, we gotta do Indy. Yeah, let's go. Indiana Jones Adventure follows you as you take a trip into the Temple of the Forbidden Eye. It is a 46 inch height requirement, so that means it is fun for most of your family. And it is a high speed dark ride that takes you through a little rough ride on one of Indy's misadventures, adventures, I guess the Venn diagram there is kind of both of those things at the same time, but it's a blast. It's a ton of fun. It, I mean, let's just let's just say it. it the track mirrors Dinosaur. Almost. It's bigger than Dinosaur, but it's the same vehicle. And I just have to say it. Indiana Jones Adventure is better. It's really rude to Dr. Grant Seeker. Uh, I think Dr. Grant Seeker is a fine, upstanding gentleman. But if I were to have to choose which doctor I would ally myself with, uh -huh. it's Dr. Jones. Yes, obviously you would want Indy in a sticky situation, but I don't want to disparage the good name of Dr. Grant Seeker. Okay. Well, while we wait for our lighting lane, let's take a lap. And I remember seeing photos on the social meds of Dr. Jones himself being out and about today. So let's see if we can find him. Dr. Jones! Nailed it. Sounds just like Shore Round, right? Uh-huh. Okay, well, after a little bit of a lap here through Adventureland, we could not locate Dr. Jones. But you know what they say. What? The true adventure is the friendship you make along the way. Uh-huh. It applies somehow, I think. Because yeah. we're on an adventure. We're in Adventureland. You get it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Off to uh, Indiana Jones Adventure? Yes. taking an adventure. I do love that attraction. I specifically love that they updated it recently. And it's been around since the 90s, but just those 
pops of technology make it feel fresh and new, and it's fully one of the agree. best. Fully agree. Okay, now it's time for you. Are you ready? I'm going to ask you to pick a ride that is something the same but also different. Like West Coast, East Coast? Yeah. Okay. Well, we already rode Pirates, which is the same but different as I explained. Uh, Jungle Cruise is here. That's different. There's no temple. And there's Piranhas. I'm a piranha. Mansion, different theme, plus hat box. Thunder, the boom booms. Space Mountain, but I prefer East Coast Space Mountain. I'm in the minority there. Oh, I could have said Indiana Jones, I guess, because as you pointed out, it's the same track and vehicle as Dinosaur, but different because it's Indiana Jones themed. I'm going to actually take that idea. Okay. And I'm going to take us back across the street <laughs> to ride Radiator Springs Racers. Listen, we're getting our steps in. Thank you. Because it's the same as Test Track, but better. True. Different and also better. All right, back across the street we go. Hello, Radiator Springs. We have made it into Cars Land, which I think is just one of the coolest lands ever. I don't even really care for the Cars franchise, and I just think this land is so amazing. The detail, incredible. It's just one of the most immersive spots, I think. And that's not even, we're not even here at nighttime. No, nighttime is next level with all the neon signs. Amazingly huh. beautiful. Look at those red rocks. Cars Land has three different attractions. It has Luigi's Rollick and Roadsters, which are cute little spinny dancing cars. It's got the Tomator Junkyard Jamboree, which is <laughs> so much fun. It makes me giggle hysterically. Look, you could see Tomator. Oh. You could meet Mater right now. Do you want to like stop and see him? No, I don't like him. Oh, whoa. Wow. I don't care for Tomator. I'm more of a Lightning McQueen girl. Is, is it the aggressive positivity or? No, it's, um, Mater's like aggressively not smart. Oh. And it would drive me insane. Like in Cars too, he just makes the same mistake over and over again basically. And I'm just like, I don't like that. You gotta learn from that. Yeah, get it together Mater. Get, get yourself together. Yeah, Tomato's just not my vibe. Uh, but what is my vibe is Radiator Springs Racers, the premier attraction here in Cars Land. This is a fancy ride when it comes to Disney Genie, meaning it's an individual cost to purchase it. It's not included with Genie Plus. Fancy rides work quite differently here in Disneyland and Disney World, where you can book them at the beginning of the day. Here, you book them just like the Genie Plus attractions at next available, which often for this ride is like within a few minutes. I booked it while we were walking over here for five minutes from when we were walking. There's a single rider line if you don't want to purchase it and you want to get on quickly, but you're going to get separated from your family. Otherwise, it normally is a pretty long line like right now. It's 65 minutes and it's not even that busy today. Radiator Springs Racers has a 44-0 inch height requirement, which is the same as Test Track its East Coast counterpoint and the reason that we're riding this attraction because Alan told me to ride something that is the same but different. Uh huh. And these are the same ride vehicles as Test Track but completely different. It is just astronomically better. The theming, the approach, the fact that you get to race. I mean if I wanted to you know ride Test Track or even go faster than Test Track I would just drive to Epcot. But here at Radiator Springs Racers, you're gonna go on a little dark ride through the town of Radiator Springs. You're gonna see the beautiful waterfall. And then your car is gonna get a workup from either Ramon's body and paint or Luigi's tires. I'm really hoping we get Ramon's because I haven't seen that side in the last like five times I've ridden this. And then you actually race a car next to you and you can win or lose, which makes it very fun to re-ride and add some suspense. Gotta ask, what color car are we gonna get? Red. I think blue.
much fun as you can have losing at Radiator Springs Racers, but it's always a fun time. Okay, I need to position another one for you right now. Okay. Because uh, it may take some pre-planning like some of the other things we've done. Okay. Uh, and depending what you say will impact what we do immediately right now. Okay. Okay. I want you to celebrate Disney Live Entertainment. So that could be a character, that could be a show, it could be yeah. whatever you want, but we need to see some live entertainment with some performers. Well, we could go see Doctor Strange again. We could. <laughs> if you want to see like another Avenger, we could do the Guardians Dance Party, I guess. Uh, or, I mean, Rogers, if we wanted to go see Rogers again. I don't know if we can get in because there was a virtual queue situation earlier, but we could try. I guess if we wanted to go back to Disneyland, we could do the Lion King show. That's a, that's an amazing show. Um, and go meet Mickey or anybody in the gang who's over there in Toontown. Um, wait, is there another Magic Happens? Yeah, then that. I'm, I, yeah, obviously. What am I talking about? <laughs> Doctor Strange? No. Magic Happens. I'm glad that... <laughs> There is a line of which you will not cross for <laughs> Doctor Strange. <laughs> yeah, magic happens, but what's that? The, the next magic happens is in like an hour and a half, so okay. we just need to plan accordingly. So I will give you another prompt. Wait, that's my last prompt though for my list. Yeah, this will be okay. your last one, but we'll we'll okay. pin magic happens for a little bit. All right, for your last prompt, I want you to pick an attraction that is radically different than when it opened. I'm not talking a couple tech effects like Snow White or Indiana Jones. I'm talking completely rethemed. Okay. Uh, well, first thing that pops in my mind is like Guardians, because it was Tower. You also have the Incredicoaster, which was California Screaming. I mean, pretty much anything in Pixar Pier. I mean, goodness, the emotional whirlwind was in Bugs Land, and they got removed in place there. <laughs> what about... <laughs> what about... <laughs> what about Monsters Incorporated? <laughs> I can sell you to the rescue. Because <laughs> it was the premier attraction of Disney's, Disney California Adventure. The <laughs> Superstar Limo. That counts. Yeah. I really thought you were going to pick Incredicoaster because I know that's your favorite ride in this park. So I was trying to like give you a softball, but we can ride that. Yeah. We should ride that. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, so good. I can't wait to see like Drew Carey just pop out of the wall. I truly am so surprised that you picked Monsters over Incredicoaster. But uh, <laughs> I also was thinking like Soren would have counted uh -huh. or the Nemo submarines, which oh, I knew yeah. you would never pick. But No, claustrophobia is real. Uh, a couple other options for you, but I'm happy to ride Superstar Limo 2.0. Yeah. It's always good for a good laugh. Gee, it's really popular over here by the uh, Hyperion. I wonder why. Huh. It's almost like there's a show or something. Oh, right. Right. I wonder if these people have been waiting all day. Wow. Do that, you think that's why I lost my voice? I, I think that might be it. Monsters Incorporated, Mike and Sully to the rescue, is a wonderful retheme to the attraction that originally opened here. Uh, which was Superstar Limo. Superstar Limo's original concept was to be a high-speed coaster putting you in the shoes of a celebrity whose limousine was being chased by a paparazzi. Now that idea was quickly scrapped after the tragic death of Princess Diana, and there was a drastic retheme to what this was originally, and it was you trying to make your way to a movie premiere while being hounded or greeted by various celebrity caricatures throughout the attraction, and that attraction lasted a year before shutting down and then becoming what it is today, which is Monsters Incorporated, Mike and Sully to the rescue. Arguably an incredible glow up. Now, Monsters Incorporated, Mike and Sully to the rescue follows the story of Mike and Sully and Boo as the two monsters try to wrangle this little human child who has made her way into the monster world. And you are a citizen of Monstropolis in your taxi cab who is watching all of the chaos unfold. And it's adorable. I mean, it's not going to be the best attraction you've ever been on, but everything about it is cute. And it's also hilarious to think that some of these agents from the CDA, or Child Detection Agency, were once caricatures of celebrities. My favorite of which is Drew Carey. My favorite of which is Jackie Chan. Ooh, great choice. Here we go. The Monstropolis Chamber of Commerce would like to welcome you. Bye. <laughs> 
when this human child throws me with its telepathic control. Ross actually watching us because she said something about camera and being filmed because I was filming her and I feel like another time she said something else that was applicable to whatever was happening in the car so I mean I don't know maybe maybe there's somebody she's who's uh, she's watching always watching always watching I'm watching you Wazowski always watching fun fact for you Molly did you do you know what the code 2319 stands for that there's a child in Monstropolis yeah but why Oh, I don't know. Oh, so the 23rd and 19th letter of the alphabet are W and S, which stands for white sock, which is what you find on the monster who first exits a child's bedroom, and they call oh. the code 2319. So then the CDA comes and shaves him down and gets thing. rid of the white sock. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's clever. Yeah. It's clever. Fun fact time. All right. Your last choice. In fact, the last choice we have to make of this entire day. Oh, wow. The because pressure. we have two pins, right? We have parade pin and fireworks pin. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure right now. There is. Now, I'm going to need you to choose a new snack. A new snack. So there's no way for me to finagle beignets into this, huh? That is correct. It's almost like it was intentional. <laughs> For the record, I'm going to get beignets oh, to absolutely. watch the fire. I'm sure, so, I'm sure. Yeah. Fully uh, support, by the way. I love beignets. Um, okay, a new snack. There are a lot of new snacks right now because they released all the summer-themed snacks. They released a bunch of Indiana Jones-themed snacks and a bunch of Rogers the Musical-themed snacks. Plus, Disneyland's just always getting new stuff because it's Disneyland. Yeah, ain't that the truth. I'm torn between, I believe there to be new meat sticks for Indiana Jones <laughs> uh -huh. and or something new from Rogers because we got to see the stuff at the media event yesterday and we got to try the shawarmitza, which was very, very good, but there were some other things that looked good. I'm going to go with a Rogers themed snack because we haven't had anything sweet yet. And the uh, cast member at the media preview said that the apple pie treat for Rogers is incredible, so I select that. All right, back to Avengers Campus. Oh boy, headed to get our apple pie treat, walking past the Hyperion Theater here, which is where Rogers the Musical is taking place this summer. We did a whole video on Avengers, as we've already mentioned, if you want more details, but Rogers the Musical is a brand new stage show themed to the in-universe musical from Hawkeye. It is delightful, highly recommend mm -hmm. for a Marvel fan. Now it is very, very popular, so they have done a virtual queue that you can join. Uh, they also have a premium package for $29. You get reserved seating and a popcorn bucket. Those are sold day of. That's what I would do, um, just as someone who likes to lock in the spot, but I know that adds up quickly if you've got a bigger party. We were also told that today the virtual queue spots went within seconds, uh, which isn't surprising because today is technically the first day of the show. So the best advice there is uh, it's open at 10.30 and 2. Have a world clock on somebody else's phone and uh, refresh right at the 59.59. Good luck and may the force be with you. I mean, um, <laughs> good luck and whatever it takes. There you work. go. There you go. Look, she's making it in action right now. It's like made to order. This is very exciting. This is the little cart here called Terran Treats outside of Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. They have the uh, Spiral Churro, which we tried yesterday and was actually quite delicious. Mm -hmm. Pleasantly surprised with that. You can also get the Cosmic Cream Orb, and they usually have some kind of seasonal treats right now, which again is the apple pie. This is the Like an Apple Pie Pizza. It's got cinnamon sugar fried pizza crust and it's topped with apple and cranberry filling, streusel and cream cheese frosting.
<laughs> mm. So, is it good? Oh my gosh, it's phenomenal. It's really hot, be careful. Ooh. It was literally made to order. Kidding. She popped it right out of the oven. Oh wow. Topped it right there. This is oh, fantastic. Oh look, Star Mantis. Mantis? I've never seen Mantis before. I'm gonna do this review really quick so we can go look at Mantis. The dough is thick and cinnamon and sugary. It's, the fruit filling doesn't taste artificial. It's got a tartness from the cranberry. I love the crunch from the streusel and then the little drizzle. This is an AA plus theme park cart dessert. Wow, I could eat this all day. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's go watch Mantis. With our delicious pie, I'm sorry, pizza? Pizza pie. Pie pizza? Something like that. Yeah, anyway, with that consumed, it's time to once more make our way across <laughs> from California Adventure into Disneyland, but this time to view the Magic Happens Parade. I will say this is one of my favorite things about coming to Disneyland. It's just easier than Walt Disney World. Once you're through security, you can access Disneyland, Disney California Adventure, and Downtown Disney, all within walking distance. It's clearly super easy to park hop, and it's it's smaller, but I think that's a pro. Absolutely. The Magic Happens Parade is the signature parade here in Disneyland, and it existed for a very short period of time just before the Panini. Now, that said, it has returned, and it is glorious. I mean, the technology that you see on the floats has multiple different IPs and stories are represented. I, I think it's just absolutely stellar, and I'm so happy it's back. The music is composed in conjunction with Todrick Hall, which means it is just a bop, and I'm very jealous of this parade, if I'm being honest. I'm obsessed with this soundtrack. I listen to it. I listen to this and Wondrous Journeys, the fireworks music, like on repeat in my office. I honestly think this might be the best original soundtrack to a Disney entertainment spectacle I've ever heard. W fully agree with you. Now, now the Magic Happens Parade is an incredibly popular parade, and, and it typically has two show times, one at 3.30 and one at 6.30. And folks begin showing up for their seats very early. Now, the first time it steps off at 3.30, it will step off from close to Small World and make its way through the park, heading out towards Main Street USA. And the second time it steps off, it moves the opposite direction, stepping off on Main Street USA and making its way back home towards the entrance of Small World. It's like literally impossible to record anything other than singing right now. A possibility. Just find a star to wish upon. Things are happening. If you just, if you just Okay, so it's a really good parade. It's the best parade I've ever seen. It's so just beautifully built, inclusive of so many ideas and stories and I, I literally just am like silently crying the whole time. I look over I'm like, ah, oh, we like one tear. Because <laughs> it's so the from the costumes and the oh. choreography, it's it's a work of art. And and Magic Happens is my favorite song that I've ever heard written for like a parade or a fireworks spectacle or anything like that. Like that is the greatest song. Everything about it is just so good. Especially Merlin. Merlin? describes how I feel at a theme park. The man wants to get jiggy with it. He wants to get down. He wants to, he really just wants to have all the energy in the world. And then you remember, my back hurts. Because you're over 30. Because I'm over 30. Do you know I know you're over 30? How? You just said get jiggy with it. 
it's an old thing now? I don't know what the kids would say. Like, it's lit. I don't know. Okay, well, I'm gonna digest that for a bit. I have uh, a question for you. Yeah. I thought of it whilst watching The yeah. Parade. If, if we could go on a double date with any Disney prince and princess. Tiana Deen. Yeah, that is the right answer. Tiana Deen. Uh, that is that? absolutely, yeah. they would be the most gonna, fun. Yeah. They were crushing Zero the dancing. They look so fun. Hopefully Tiana will cook. I would I would love to learn she, underneath Tiana. She brings Her tutelage some, would be incredible. She brings some beignets, some beignasses, mm -hmm. and we would just have a swing and good time. I think they would be Great. the most fun couple and to Naveen have. would provide the music? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I want uh, this to happen. Now. I know. Now I'm just dreaming about being on a double date with fictional cartoons. That's a normal thing people do. Hey, who do you want to go on a double date with? Yeah, let us know. Comments. Okay, so there are approximately two and a half hours till Wondrous Journeys tonight. Yes. Which is the final thing on the checklist. Yes. What shall we do? I think, I propose, I posit, we spend those two and a half hours doing things that we enjoy off camera. Brave. I mean, I know, listen, we've spent a lot of time and I had a lot of fun making some content, but we're not here that often. So I kind of want to just go chill for a bit. Well, maybe grab a highlight reel. Oh yeah. Do a little highlight reel montage moment. Ooh, we love a montage. And uh, we'll see you back here after said montage for the fireworks. <sighs> bye bye. Bye. Had some treats, rode some rides, and now we are on Main Street for your final selection, the fireworks. So the fireworks at Disneyland right now are called Wondrous Journeys, and it is a celebration of Disney animation, and it is so, so beautiful. Now, I've seen the show a couple times at this point, and I have developed a strong opinion on the best place to stand, and it is right at the top of Main Street where you can still see the buildings, but you can also see the castle. And the reason that my opinion is so strong is that there are amazing projections in the show that they do both on Sleeping Beauty Castle and on Main Street, but Sleeping Beauty Castle is so small that unless you get up there really, really early, you're not going to be able to see the projections if you go up in the hub. I feel like it's much better to see the projections around you. And then if you're at the top of Main Street, you can still see the castle for the fireworks and the flying surprises. Also, the show is leaving in August for seasonal stuff, which makes me really sad. So I'm glad we get to see it one last time. And I'm excited to see it with fireworks, presumably, oh, yeah. because I've only seen it with projections. So I'm excited. And so tonight, we once again invite you to wish upon stars, to step into the unknown, and to join us on this our wondrous journey. Okay, well we have some good news and we have some bad news. The good news is Baymax and the Blue Fairy flew. The bad news is we had no pyro this evening. It was just projections. But that's okay because I'm obsessed with this show and this soundtrack and I want to 
simultaneously curse at and also hug whoever thought they should do a medley of Moana, Belle, Quasimodo, and Hercules because it is like so beautiful. It brings me to tears instantly. It's an emotional gut punch. No one does a montage like Disney. And this is essentially just a really big montage and they build you up and they hit you with that I want song that Howard Ashman insisted on in A Little Mermaid that here's your characters, here's what they want and then they delight you and then they punch you in the throat <laughs> <laughs> and they knock the wind out of you by showing Baymax fall away and all the oh, sad moments golly. but then they bring you back up and you're crying the whole time, if you're me anyway. It's, it's brilliant. I really hope it comes back after the seasonal stuff. I think this is a phenomenal fireworks show. It's my favorite fireworks slash projection show I've ever seen after Wishes. I will stay in Wishes till my tying day, but it's incredible. And if you're in Disneyland and they're showing this fireworks or not, see it standing on Main Street. Absolutely. An incredible show. It's an incredible way to end an incredible day. If you like this video concept, let us know. We'll be happy to try it on the East Coast as well. Maybe I'll have a voice there. Maybe. Until next time, friends, be sure to like the video, subscribe if you're new, follow us on all of our socials, and join us on Discord for the conversations that we have there. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been so magical. Good night. Bye. Bye, Bye Walt. It's been a pleasure, pal. Thanks.